Hey, my name is Kyle. I just designed my first watch escapement from scratch. Hey, my name is Kyle, and I'm in the middle of designing my own watch movement. Completely 3D printable, completely from scratch. The reason why I'm so excited about this is that it's the essential mechanism in keeping time for any watch or any clock. Now, this is episode three of my design series. If you want to see more of this, uh, be sure to check out one and two and subscribe. Also, just wanted to let you guys know that from now on, I will try to be posting every Tuesday of every week. That's at least one upload a week. Some weeks I'll probably be uploading more videos, hopefully, whether it be a new episode of my watch design series or just another random project that I'm working on. So if you're into this kind of stuff, subscribe. Thank you so much. Okay, so going back to where we left off last episode, I'm going to roll back to some footage from last week where I was talking about my design of the palette fork and some changes and adjustments that I had to make. As far as my escapement design goes, I showed Jack and he gave me a couple of tips and tricks to help me with my overall design. Before I had two symmetrical palettes that were concentric to the pivot point of the palette fork. He advised me to shift the entry palette towards the center of the pallet fork. What this does is it decreases the difference in the radii that the two locking faces have, and this creates a better and more balanced pallet fork. I also received some brass tubes and brass rods in the mail. These are 1.8 mil. These are 3 mil outer diameter and 0.5 millimeter wall thickness and brass tubes. Now that I have some hardware, I'm going to now think about how to fit the hardware into the parts that I 3D print. Um, so to do that, I had to create a test part in Fusion and test the fit and tolerances and stuff. These holes start from 1.8 millimeters and go up all the way to 2.2 millimeters in diameter. Now for some weird reason, even though the holes on the escape wheel and the pallet fork, I thought when I designed them they were the same dimension, but for some reason, the escape wheel spins freely when mounted on a 1.8 millimeter brass rod. On the other hand, the pallet fork has a really tight interference fit. I'm actually going to try to reprint the pallet fork. Okay, so now onto the design of the balance wheel. Now believe me, I literally had no idea what I was doing in the beginning. I still kind of don't. I don't know the theory behind the watchmaking that I'm doing, 
but it's cool to discover things as I go along. Okay, so I'm just really quickly throwing together a very basic design of the balance wheel here. I honestly really am not sure if this is going to work or not. I really struggled with this design in the beginning. As you will see, I, I have three different plates, three different, I guess, mounting points um, where the shafts, some would go through the mounting plates. There's two outer ones and there's one inner one and the inner one sort of acts as the pivot point for the pallet fork and the outer one acts as an anchor point for both the balance wheel and the escape wheel. Just having three things stacked on top of each other was not the most structurally sound and rigid, so there was a lot of play. In addition, I also discovered that my 3D printer was just really weird. Um, as you can see here, the material of the raft actually came off with the balance wheel, and so I was struggling to actually figure out the settings for my 3D printer with this. Um, parts would actually, parts that actually needed to have very tight tolerances still had residual material stuck to certain holes, especially in a part like the pallet fork, which needs to be completely free of any friction, of any obstructions in the hole that the shaft has to go through. Also, some of the features were just way too small. Um, mainly, I'm talking about the pallet fork and the impulse jewel that's on the balance wheel. They were just not meshing well together because they were so small and so inaccurate on the 3D printer. So I had to play around with the dimensions of the balance wheel and pallet fork, make them big enough to actually mesh with each other and interact with each other, but also small enough so that they could still fit in a relatively small form factor. Now I ended up getting really frustrated with this three mounting plate design. This is just too finicky, so I ended up just completely starting from scratch. I actually started from where I was last week with just the escape wheel and the pallet fork, but this time I tried to um, design it with only two mounts, um, a top and a bottom mount that sort of sandwiched all the rods in between. Um, and this proved to be a very effective solution. The first revision of this design was actually looking a lot more hopeful. So I went ahead and assembled it off camera and it did not work mainly because the pallet fork was too big and the escape wheel just didn't move properly. So I am going to go ahead and adjust the dimensions but also tweak a bunch of other parts of the design. Also as this whole thing was going on and I was revising my designs and printing them, I was also adjusting the settings of my printer. I ended up actually fine tuning it so that the prints would actually come off easily with no tools required. So as you can see here, the most recent design of my escape, escapement, I actually just everything came off really nicely. After that major design change of going from three different mounting plates to just two, things were starting to look a lot better. Now with this new revision, I changed a bunch of dimensions, including the placement of banking pins, the radius of the impulse jewel, the dimensions of the safety roller and the safety pin, and the overall length of the pallet lever. At this point, this design is the most likely to work right off the printer, uh, so we'll see how that works and we'll test it out. This part of the hairspring square, um, and I also made a square hole in the bottom of the balance spring, so they fit together pretty easily. If we add the brass rod and slide the balance spring over, we get a nice springing action there. <gasps> 
so yeah, so I guess this works now. I was not expecting it to work on my second try of this iteration of the design. Um, wow. Yes. It's like an old lawnmower. It's so annoying to start. Nice. Okay. So I honestly had no idea that I would have been able to get this far in just a couple of days really. Over those couple of days I did end up spending maybe 12-15 hours on it in total. I did stay up till 5 a.m. multiple nights in a row trying to just get something to work but it was worth it in the end and now that I have something that's actually working I can tweak it and hopefully um, get it to the point where it works a lot better. Anyway, if you like this episode, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you want to stay updated on my latest projects. Thank you guys, and I will see you next time.